Storybook Brawl was nice enough to send me some dust codes, so I'm doing another giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win. What is up, everybody? I'm No Looks Given, and today we are going to try to solve the riddle of the Sphinx. And the Sphinx, with the new change to it, is definitely a trickier hero to play. And honestly, I probably did overrate the hero. I think that the Sphinx is kind of bad, but there are some ways that you can take advantage of the hero power. The first of which is going to be Genie's Wish. If you can find a Genie's Wish early on in the game, that can be super helpful because then any subsequent Genie's Wishes that you find are going to be free. But also, in this case, we cast a Shrink spell, which is Probably the best thing that you can cast off an early Genie's Wish, maybe roll the die or something, would also be equivalent here. But now any shrink spells that we find are going to be free as well. So that is a nice little way to generate some additional free spells in your shop. Another way to generate some free spells is probably Great Library Card. But how do you not take Easter Egg here? So I pick up this Easter Egg. I do definitely debate it because I do think that the library card is great on the Sphinx, the great library card. Uh, but I just decide to pick up the Easter Egg to protect my Humpty. And uh, hopefully we can be strong with that. This game is going to have some weird things going on in it. Uh, there's going to be some sub games that we play out, including the Sphinx sub game, uh, but definitely like with this Easter egg treasure and stuff, there's other ways that we manage to be strong despite our hero power, I would say. And I really want to find a princess for this one. So I roll and then I see a queen of hearts, which is definitely a weird pickup from here uh, because we don't have any evil units, but I'm thinking I will actually shard this egg and that winds up being pretty good for us. An 8-8 upgraded kitty cup purse I think is quite strong. And then we do have some options for this shop the next turn as well. We could pick up mummy plus black cat. We could pick up mummy plus the gingerbread party. I think that both of these are pretty reasonable options. And if we are able to slay, we'll be able to pick up gingerbread party plus mummy plus black cat. And I think we will be able to slay with an 8-8 unit. We actually are able to slay twice. And that's kind of what I was talking about, that this game has some other powerful things going on. At that point, I can roll and then try to pick up another level 3 unit. And my plan here was to pick up the Lonely Prince, skip the treasure, and then just pick up a 3-drop. But when I see the puzzle rune, I think it's time we start another sub-game. I never wound up showing you guys this game because it was pretty straightforward. I wound up just crushing the lobby, but this was an early game that I played on the new patch with Zelhua, where I picked up a turn three skips puzzle rune and then locked onto a pair of baby roots. And this game really taught me, I'll just kind of jump ahead through it and uh, we can kind of see how it develops. I just wind up picking up some pairs. I'll pick up the queen of hearts here. I picked up the baby roots, these uh, wicked witches and, and really aggressively hunted pairs which is not something that I typically do on Zelhua. But when I did eventually get the puzzle rune, we pick up the treasure map, replace the puzzle rune, this plus two XP, especially on a hero like Zelhua that can really make use of the XP, was just way too powerful for the rest of the lobby to deal with. And then I even wind up picking up this wish upon a star to get even more XP. And then from there, I don't know, probably just bought a bunch of trees or something, right? Um, yeah, trees and pumpkins. Oh yeah, 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 the game never even, I never even really wound up making a comp because I was just so far ahead of the rest of the lobby that everybody died before I really had what you would consider like a dedicated comp put together. But what this game really taught me is that the Skip's Puzzle Rune is not to be underestimated and it's especially really good on Wonder Waddle, but even if you're not playing Wonder Waddle, I mean, you can see I've got four, um, uh, six cost units there and my opponent was still on like 5.1, 5.2, something like that. So all of this is just really, really extremely powerful and uh, let me get just a huge advantage over the rest of the lobby. So I think that in my patch review, I potentially underestimated Skip's Puzzle Rune and even though I never said that I loved it, 
I probably overestimated just slightly the Sphinx. And so because of that, in this game, I'm going to wind up picking up the puzzle rune and it's, it's tricky. Now I'm playing like multiple sub games, right? That's why as we look at this sub game, uh, I was talking about like sub games and things and, and exactly what that means. But um, it's very awkward to balance and we can we can just jump ahead. I'll, I'll show the end of this game here. Um, I think I, yeah, I locked a knighthood or something. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's, it's very close to being over. Oh, oh no, it's over right there. So there we go. Um, yeah, it was just a very quick game where I just kind of dominated despite not really putting together like the most coherent of a comp. Uh, it was all just still very powerful and I was so far ahead of the rest of the lobby. So because of that, I definitely have a newfound appreciation for the puzzle rune and I'm going to wind up rolling and then locking onto a Queen of Hearts, just locking onto any pairs and things that I can find. Uh, but now we're kind of, I, I told you this game's going to get a little bit messy. Um, we are going to be pursuing the puzzle rune and we're also going to be trying to make the most out of the Sphinx. And really, the only reason we can afford to do any of this is because of our Kitty Cuppers. It's getting double slays now for two turns in a row, which is just fantastic. We're having so much extra gold. We're going to be able to pick up a Tier 3 treasure right now. When you see the Crystal Ball on the Sphinx, you got to at least try to go for it, right? So um, we do wind up picking up the Crystal Ball. Now, interestingly, I'm going to back up for a second because I think that what I should have just done, oh, I backed up too much. Well, what I think I should do after I pick up the Crystal Ball is just pick up the Minotaur and the Spinning Gold. I think that that ultimately would have been a better play this turn, but it works out. I wind up rolling, casting a Witch's Brew, and then finding one of those free spells. I find a Shrink spell that I also kind of cast for free on turn two, but I'm casting for free again now. So that'll let me pick up the Humpty Dumpty for one coin and uh, just continue to try to do something here. I'm not really sure exactly what we're doing. We're playing only five units still, though a few of our units have some additional stats from the Easter egg treasure. And then uh, we also have the Queen of Hearts that's gonna grow a little bit. And even the Humpty Dumpty, which is certainly our weakest unit, is pretty good in 8-8 to be our weakest unit. So we definitely have a shot here Though it does look like we are going to take some damage. It's a close one. It's a close one. But yeah, we will wind up taking some damage. We'll trade with the Blind Mouse and then we'll take five. Not too big of a deal. I'm still looking for one more treasure to potentially complete the Puzzle Rune. And then I am uh, just casting some spells here. I don't want to pick up the Fairy Godmother because chances of me rolling and then finding the Fairy Godmother immediately, probably not super high. And... Then I wind up picking up a Spell Weaver, obviously really good with the Crystal Ball, and locking onto this shop, which is fantastic. It's got a pair, and it's got a Monster Book. So this is one of the other things I wanted to talk about with this video. Monster Book, really, really good on the Sphinx, because the Monster Book, when it dies, last breath, is going to cast a spell. That counts as casting a spell as far as the Sphinx is concerned. It, it also counts for a spell as like your Storm Kings and everything. For all intents and purposes, you have cast that spell. So if Monster Book casts a Blessing of Athena, then any future Blessing of Athenas that you find are going to be free. So that makes Monster Book definitely a really solid pickup when you are playing the Sphinx and what you want to roll for when you become level four on the Sphinx. So. I'll pick up that, but not before tripling onto these blind mice, and nothing really super impressive here. I'll pick up the Ring of Rage, toss the Puzzle Rune, and become level 5. And the really good thing about becoming level 5 is now we could potentially look for Aeons, and... I think that that's still important. So you'll see that I am casting some spells here and I do get like some free bonuses there. I grab a Witch's Brew for free, that's nice. But ultimately I think falling into this gameplay pattern is a little bit of a trap on the Sphinx. I think that you still need a way, I always talk about you need Crystal Ball plus some kind of cheat. Some way to either get extra gold or make your spells cost cheaper or 
something else akin to that. Basically one of those two things. And here we do have the Kitty Cup purse. That has definitely been the carry of this game. Don't get it twisted. But the Sphinx in itself, I don't think is enough of a cheat. And the reason for that is it ultimately, you're gonna have to still pay for all of your spells the first time you find them. And that'll make it a pretty gold intensive comp to try to play. So that is something to definitely keep in mind. It can be a little bit awkward, but it's not going to stop me on this game from casting a whole bunch of spells. And uh, we throw a True Love's Kiss on the Good Witch because that was mix a wizzled and then we just keep on rolling. And we are finding a bunch of Witch's Brews. Those are nice. Maybe should I have taken the Cindy earlier? Probably. Uh, I just wind up picking it up now and uh, then pick up Sherwood Sure Shot to feed to the Kraken. I think Lightning Bolt could definitely be a totally fine pickup there, but just wind up rolling and then locking onto a Merlin's Test for the next turn. And I think that that is pretty reasonable too. Um, again, the only reason that any of this is staying together is because of the Kitty Cup purse. So the reason that I keep just emphasizing that is just to make sure that you don't think, okay, crystal ball on the Sphinx, easy win. Uh, you still have some work to do if that is what you find yourself in. So we're gonna wind up losing this combat. We take nine damage and we don't get the slay with Kitty Cupper. So that part is a little bit annoying, but we'll cast some more spells here, make them free for the next times that we find them. And I don't think I want Genie's Wish because we've got this crystal ball still. So I'm just gonna pick up the golden chicken and keep on rolling here. This will be free, the Queen's Blessing. That'll let us flip over the Sin and from there I mean I don't think the rune stones is horrible I just had my video yesterday where I talked about how good rune stones is so I think that that one could be a pickup and I wind up tossing the ring of rage for that and um, yeah not really too much to do here we're gonna cap off the turn with a genie's wish to continue to be strong and then uh, i wound up just throwing all of my evil units in the front row and cutting the mummy uh, i felt like this made me a little bit stronger for the turn but we shall find out i am gonna get the slay with kitty cupper so that's nice and then uh, my opponent has a position one siren with a bunch of summons so that's not gonna be super great for them. They are gonna have a bunch of cats, but I don't think that that is gonna be enough. It's, it's really just gonna come down to my opponent's um, uh, Queen of Hearts there, and we were able to take it down. So now we are level six. Let me mute that, because I'm hearing that a little bit in the background. And uh, from here, I go for a Croc spell. Definitely, again, a super coin intensive pickup, but I thought it would be cool to make all of my crocs free for the rest of the game. And uh, there is an important part to notice with this game that like definitely a little bit of this is all experimentation for me. And I'm trying to figure out what works and what does not on the new the Sphinx. So the rune stones could still be sweet in that it could allow us to pick up a tier 7 treasure or something definitely on the uh got my eye out for hercules that's something that would be cool uh to pick up and then um we could also find some more croc spells now that croc spells are free we could cast two more of those um it's definitely okay to put a monster book in the croc that's one of the units that functions better inside of the croc um, but none of my other units really, really want to be crocked, so we will have to uh, try to puzzle our way around that. We wind up taking 13 damage against a bunch of dwarves, and I pick up a Spellweaver here, totally forgetting that I even had the runestone. So that was just a straight up mistake, did not mean to do that, but we do get to take Krampus's Slay against a Potion Master, so maybe there's some silver lining there, but that was 100% a mistake. I just got blinded by the ability to pick up a, um, a, uh, a, a spell weaver there and uh, and triple that. So um, yeah, definitely a mistake, but we pick up a lightning bolt that we do have to pay for because we did not cast that lightning bolt earlier, but we'll see how this goes for us. We got two monster books. 
We are still up a little bit of XP because of the Sphinx, though. We're not really making that great of use of the XP. We haven't purchased any tier six units yet, but we do see that my opponent has some mage related treasures, and that is really going to be the savior for us this game. If we can manage to win, which it looks like it's gonna be really close, but we will be able to, thanks to either the Easter egg or one witch's brew, we were able to win that combat. So now we get to pick up a Merlin's hat. And that is really, really good. And I wanna stress how good that is because it might seem counterproductive. Why would you want a Merlin's hat when most of your spells are free? And the answer is because those spells that aren't free are still so, so expensive. It's really impossible to just win with a crystal ball and actually paying the full retail price for all of your spells. So we are gonna be able to get some cheap spells here and we're casting some spells. You can see that we haven't cast yet, which is going to allow us to just cast them the first time for free and then later on if we find another treasure we can get rid of this hat and that would be a big deal in some situations we can like um keep the easter egg or keep one of these other treasures but if we, we're gonna pick up this hercules here now and if we manage to complete the hercules treasure then we can get rid of the Merlin's hat and pick up a tier six treasure. And then maybe we could replace the Easter egg with something else. And that is kind of the benefit of the Sphinx's hero power. But I definitely would not underestimate Merlin's hat just in terms of getting you jump started into the game. So we're going to pick up the Hercules here now and nothing to cast this flourish on not really worth purchasing a tree just for that so i'll wind up rolling i could go for pigomorph here i think it's fine it's going to make other pigomorphs free and importantly we only had three gold left for the turn so i think that that makes it uh worthwhile i am trying to see if i can get this kitty cup first onto the board but it doesn't look like i will be able to so i'm just going to wind up cutting the queen of hearts now that we've got a few more good units on this board thanks to the beauty's influence hercules is going to stick around after damaging so that'll get two triggers on it we'll need three more and then we also of course pigomorph my opponent's bear stain so that's going to be really good it's going to mean echo wood is not really too much to deal with and still a bunch of baby bears for my opponent uh, that's not really going to give us too much here uh, but is definitely a nice little bonus and then we steal some of their pigs which actually let us win the fight that was a really really silly combat uh, then i'll go for another mix a whistle I should have gone for that on the siren, uh, but just wasn't wasn't thinking about it. And uh, Beauty's Influence, then we can cast a, uh, what is that, Sugar and Spice, and some more spells on the Hercules, so that way that potentially activates this turn. I then find another Storm King, so that's pretty good, and I'm just throwing all spells on the Herc here before finding an Evil Twin. Uh, which I might lock, but honestly, I don't really even want. This game is like really close to being over, and ultimately has been a very weird game, right? Um, we are like hat ball, but we're not really hat balling to the fullest potential. Um, but we are, I mean, this was a very like quick game too. Um, and ultimately was, was just kind of weird, but uh, hopefully it gives you at least a little bit of insight into the Sphinx. I'm not sure if we will actually get a kill here because my opponent has some reasonable units on their own here. We will steal two angries and then we've got the Storm King to clean things up, but we will actually wind up tying, which is fine because then we just get to cast more spells. So really looking for some Crocs, that would be great. Uh, we did not complete the Hercules because it was not big enough. So we will still need some more combats here to do battles with that. I throw one of my Storm Kings in the Croc and now I'm looking for one more Croc to go. Unfortunately, Bear Stain will not pump up these Crocs for us, but um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna look for one more. We're mix -a whizzling I find an upgraded Storm King. That's pretty big. And then, uh, yeah, just casting a few more spells here to round it out. And I don't think we wind up doing anything else crazy this turn, if my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, just a um, Queen's Grace there to round things out. And I threw a bunch of spells on the Hercules, despite it not really needing them, and uh, tried to cast that uh, Dwarf spell to end things off, but uh, didn't do anything. So we are gonna get the treasure from Hercules this turn. If we tie, my opponent did pick up an Echo Wood, 
but I think that we are a lot stronger this turn with our massive Storm King, so I don't think we're gonna need it. I think, yeah, we take out their Echo Wood. Oh, but we only bring them down to three. Okay, so we got another turn to go here. We could pick up Wand of Weirding and toss the uh, Merlin's Hat, like I said, and unfortunately, like, stuff like Evil Twin is just gonna be way too expensive to cast, though. If we cast it on the Croc, it does give us a Tier 6 treasure, um, or we could cast it on, like, Monster Book, it'll, because it'll give us two, um, for anything that we cast it on. So, that stuff is definitely worth considering, but ultimately, we're not going to worry about it. We do find ourselves with an Ashwood Elm this turn, so we could go ahead and pick up a Burning Tree, but I'm just gonna keep on letting it roll by here, and then uh, we'll, we'll swip this over into a Cupid. That's a pretty good unit, especially against dwarves. And I don't hate the Pigomorph either. I'm gonna wind up um, True Love's Kissing the Cupid. I know it's good, uh, but this is even better. And then we see a Croc on the very last shop of the game, but don't have enough time to cast it. And we also pick up another Storm King. So we don't have the upgraded Storm King this turn, but we do have three Storm Kings, one of which is inside that backline Croc. It doesn't really matter though, as we are just going to do my opponent in and be super powerful there. Did I solve the Riddle of the Sphinx? Not super sure but I definitely put something pretty powerful together. So let me know what you guys think of the new Sphinx in the comments down below. Here's the details for my giveaway. Just leave a comment on any of my videos this week that includes the word support, and you'll be entered into a chance to win a 4,000 dust code. The reason that I say to include the word support, that way I can differentiate between the people just leaving a comment and those that are actually interested in the dust to make sure that it goes to a person that will appreciate it. And there's no limit to how many times you can enter. You can go back and comment on some of my previous videos. I've been uploading daily storybook brawl videos for the past seven or eight months at this point, so I'm sure there is some sweet content that you have yet to see. And yeah, you can enter multiple times. I will do a new code next week. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that if a bunch of people enter, I will give away more codes. So that's just going to be limited by how many people are entering and how many people are commenting. Let's get this channel to over 1,000. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.